If wishes were horses, those wishes would all run away, shrieking and bucking, terrified of a great unseen evil. Welcome back to Rootstock. Listeners, some of you may know me as Cecil Baldwin, the voice and narrator of the hit podcast, Welcome to Night Vale. A friendly desert community where the sun is hot, the moon is beautiful, and the lights pass overhead while we all pretend to sleep. But now, I would like you to welcome to the stage a lover of Tesla, <laughs> Sriracha, and Asshole Cats in business wear. Creator of the oatmeal, Matthew Inman. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, like you said, my name is Matthew. I'm the writer and illustrator behind the Oatmeal. Uh, you can find it on cyberspace uh, at HTTP, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol, colon forward slash forward slash the Oatmeal dot com. And today I want to talk mostly about um, love, cats, outer space, Heroes, chimpanzees, monkeys, and boners. And I'm going to do that by focusing mostly on animals in space and the history of animals that were uh, the first astronauts, starting with the French. Um, in 1783, <laughs> the French decided to perform an experiment where they wanted to know the high altitude effects on living organisms. So they took a rooster. <laughs> Uh, duck, sheep, they built a hot air balloon, stuck them in the hot air balloon, and they uh, lifted them off into the sky. So in 1783, this was a big deal. 130,000 people turned out for this event. Uh, Marie Antoinette was there, King was there, everybody was there. Big deal, crowd went crazy. Um, they soared to about 1,500 feet into the air. And actually what's interesting was the duck was used as a control group because ducks fly at high altitudes and they wanted something that uh, was immune to the altitude effects, so they could see uh, who got hurt and why. Um, so the, the kind of result of this, uh, they went about 1,500 feet up, they traveled two miles, and they delicate, delicately landed back on the Earth. The official flight report translated from French into English is as follows. And this is the actual flight report. Some of this is comedy, but this is the actual flight report. The animals are fine. <laughs> and the sheep has pissed the cage. <laughs> Crowd goes crazy. Thank you, French people, for doing some great science that day. Great job. So, snap forward like 170 years, something like that, into the 1950s. Pretty much France were the only ones doing this up until the Russians decided uh, in the 1950s. They're like, you guys, space is great. Let's put some stuff in space. So they put something called Sputnik into space, nobody cares, you all heard of it. So that happened. Russia was like, all right, we did Sputnik, it's a big deal. We gotta go bigger. We gotta think bigger, we gotta do something else. We gotta have a new show to show these people who we are. So they, their first thought was, let's, let's put a man in space. Um, but it was dangerous, we didn't know what ZOG was like, we didn't know what it was gonna be like up there. So they thought, let's do a dog. They got a dog. Uh, and um, bam, dog in space. <laughs> Dog died, asphyxiated in space. It's horrible, I know. But they did it. Good job, Mike. Um, way to go. Good job, Russia, I suppose. So the US of A, United States of America, was like, all right, guys, we got to up our game. They not only have they launched Sputnik, they've launched Mutnik, and we don't have anything. We have nothing. We have nobody in space. So um, the predecessor to uh, Alan Shepard and Joe Glenn, the two men who were first in orbit and first in space, 
uh, was a chimpanzee. Or, I'm sorry, it was not a chimpanzee, it was a monkey. A rhesus monkey named Albert. And Albert was one of six Alberts. We had six separate monkeys sent on six separate missions into outer, or into space, uh, making the first Albert the first ever um, monkey astronaut. This is what he looked like. He's kind of cute. He's got a pretty intense little war face getting ready for his <laughs> outer space shenanigans. Um, this is what we stuffed him in. This is a German V2 rocket. These are the equivalent of an ICBM in World War II. Um, we had reclaimed a bunch of them after war, and rather than building a rocket, we just stuffed monkeys in these things and fired them into the skies. Uh, like I said before, there were six Alberts. Albert number one, he launched. Launch was successful, he reached outer space. First chimp, sorry, first monkey in space. Unfortunately, uh, he asphyxiated up there and he died. Uh, Albert number two actually made it in space. He actually did the return trip on the way home. The nose cone failed, causing the parachute to fail, and he died on impact at 7,000 miles an hour. <laughs> Albert number three, the ever hopeful, hopeful Albert number three, he was incinerated at 38,000 feet. <laughs> Albert number four, parachute failed, died on impact. Albert five, parachute failed, died on impact. Albert number six, they were like, the United States of America Space Agency at the time was like, alright guys, we're getting good at this. Let's, let's up the ante. So they stuffed 11 mice into it with him. <laughs> Albert number six, the ever hopeful Albert number six, <coughs> fired into the heavens, and he reached space, he turned around, came back, landed safely. I know. In the desert. In the desert. It took him three hours to get to him. He died of uh, eating Josh. Uh, yeah. Only though, only two mice died. So, six missions accomplishing nine mice in space. Alive at the end. It's pretty remarkable. Um, so the French were like, all right, the Russians, we got dogs. You know, we got, you know, the Americans are firing these monkeys in space. But we should, we should get on this, 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 uh, this bandwagon. So they had a meeting, like, what are we going to do? You know, we do mice. You know, the Americans have already done that. Uh, we could do a dog. I mean, the Russians have been doing dogs. They've been killing them in space for years. <laughs> we could do a monkey. Alberts were not so good. I mean, it's sort of a, a cursed mission. Plus, they're too fat. <laughs> so, like, we could do a rerun. Why don't we send up the same stuff again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, no, we can't, you guys, we gotta, we have to, we can't just do a, this is a cover album of ourselves. We gotta, we gotta branch out, we gotta choose some new animals. Also, um, sheep are in, typically incontinent in space. Um, like, some of the meetings like, you guys, you guys, I got this. Don't, don't even worry. We're gonna take this all away. We're gonna do cats. So, the French formed a space agency and started lifting cats into space. They um, picked up 16 Parisian street cats, uh, wonderful little kitties, in order to fire them bravely into the stars. Uh, everyone crazy is such a good idea, because if there's two things people love, it's cats in space, so let's put them together, and you've got a hit. So it was a hit. These are the original Patternots. Um, originally there were 16. Uh, during training, it got narrowed down to six, because I shit you not, Ten of them ran away. They couldn't <laughs> keep cats. Like, which I don't understand. It makes no sense to me. I mean, what they're doing is rocket science, and you can't keep a cat. You know, it's, it's the easiest thing to keep. You have a room. You have a place to, for it to drink and to eat and to poop, and you have accomplished that cat. So, um, of the original six, the one on the left. Um, these are the cat outs, The one on the left. Uh, known as Fela Set. You can see her right here. She's adorable. She was chosen as the first uh, cat astronaut. Um, the reason she was chosen, this is her when she was growing up, uh, right before launch, that little thing on her head was uh, an implant in her brain so they could measure her uh, brain waves during uh, flights so they could see the um, physiological uh, effects on cats in zero gravity. Of those six, uh, you can see Fela Set in the upper left. This is the actual reason that I read um, for them choosing Fela Set instead of the others, was that the others actually gained too much weight during training. <laughs> Again, I don't know what the French do to these cats, but it's not that hard for not to feed a cat. So, 
Fail set. Brave the Wonderful Kitty was put into a French rocket. She was fired in space. Bam! Cat in space. Everybody's happy. She returned safely. She lived happily ever after. So that was great. They were good cats. The United States of America was uh, not happy about the Albert situation. They weren't happy with these cats. They're like, you guys, we are getting our butts kicked here. We, we've got six dead monkeys and two dead mice. So uh, they decided to start sending chimpanzees instead of monkeys. Uh, the first chimpanzee, his name was Ham, uh, he was sent up to, um, he was actually, this is a photo of Ham. He was a very famous chimp. He was, uh, how do I put this? He was a gregarious chimp. He was a well-behaved chimp. He was a great astronaut. He did everything he was supposed to do. Everybody loved Ham. He was adorable. He was on the cover of Life magazine. I don't like Ham, and I want to tell you why. Because, in my opinion, Ham pandered to the media. I think Ham ignored the suffering of all of those poor animals that came before him. And Ham basically just, I don't know, I'm not going to make Ham it up here because I don't like puns. Neither do you. Point is, I don't like Ham. I don't want to talk about Ham. He's not a hero. He should not be on the cover of Life magazine. I want to talk about Ham's successor, a lesser known chimpanzee known as, uh, his name was actually Enos. Uh, here's a photo of Enos. Oh, no. Enos had a nickname. Uh, and that was Enos the Penis. And there are two very good reasons for this nickname. NASA gave him this nickname. Uh, reason number one was he was an asshole. He was a terrible, terrible chimp. He used to fight with the trainers. He used to, uh, they had to scrub missions because he literally and figuratively couldn't keep his shit together. He got in fights, he was wholesome, but he was a great, he was a great astronaut and he, he mostly performed well. That's reason number one. Reason number two is Enos the Penis, according to what I read, and this varies from book to book. Um, I recently read Mary Roach's book, uh, uh, Packing for Mars, and she just disagrees with me here. It's a great book, great author. Um, Enos the Penis jerked off all the time. And it was a problem. Uh, he did it in training. He did it on his mission. And I know that may seem foul, and that may seem crude, and that may seem un-American to you, but I think after all the suffering that had come before him and all the terrible shit he did to animals, I applaud him for what he did because chimps don't flip people off. They don't, they don't cast stones. They jerk off. That's how they say, fuck you, I'm a chimp and I'm going to masturbate in space. And that's what he did. And I salute him for it. Because that's what being an American is about. It's about... Planting a flag of defiance in front of your opponent and covering it in jiggling bones. <laughs> Rest in peace, Enos. Um, every time I see a falling star, I will masturbate on my front lawn. <laughs> Thank you very much.